two people, two pups, two boats, and two ways of savoring life. Through the hard work of restoring our Heavenly Twins catamaran, and through the adventures we take and places we visit on our McGregor 26X. Our channel takes an easygoing, light-hearted approach to enjoying life, one bikini at a time. So if you're up for some sailing and other fun, then we're happy to have you aboard. We post new videos every couple weeks, so hit that subscribe button and we'll see you here next time. And also check out the links below. We have extended videos on Vimeo and we also have a Patreon page. Thanks to everyone for watching. Previously on Sailing and Fun, we hung out on the boat for a while hoping that a very gloomy day would turn into blue skies. When they finally did, we had an amazing day at the beach. where the captain hung up our hammock. We spent time with the fishes, fed the wildlife, and as you do on sailing channels, climbed a tree for the best view. then took in a beautiful sunset. We also got busy on the catamaran where we found some standing water, so it was leak test time once again. We did find an old sail track that was letting in water and some fuel inlets. So the captain cut right into the top of the fiberglass, we removed it and started getting rid of rotted wood. And then we cleaned up and got ready for the next phase. Although there has never been a cause for concern, knock on wood, the captain's always a little nervous when I drive through bridges. I guess I do understand though there is a crazy current, so if you're in the Keys, you do need to be cautious. Once we get out to the Atlantic, we switch sides and he starts taking us on a great ride out to the reef but not for long. As you can see, once again, the Atlantic is really churning up here, and this is not an ideal day for the reef and definitely not an ideal day for sailing on the Atlantic. So he turns us around lowers the mass and heads us under a shorter bridge where we can enjoy some smoother bayside sailing. So we have everything gathered for a great day on the water, including a favorite on this boat, whipped cream vodka. It is so good you can just sip it straight. Another favorite on this boat when sailing is dancing, because why wouldn't you want to have even more fun?
with things calming down a little bit, we were able to raise the main sheet. A lot of people ask us how the McGregor sails, and I know sometimes you say there's too much wind and sometimes there's not enough. At times you'll fill the ballast and other times you don't want to. So because you know a lot more about sailing than I do, I will defer to you, Captain. Can you tell us your take on how that Mac sails best? The recommendation is to always fill the ballast while sailing. It's the safest and it limits the amount of roll you have. The worst state you can be in on a McGregor with the ballast is to have it half full. If it's half full, the water sloshes back and forth and when you have a rolling wave, it rolls you over even farther. So the, it, you should only have it all the way full or all the way empty at all times. For a while there, things calmed down so much we could really relax. A condition where we don't fill the ballast, and it's a personal decision, is downwind sailing un under light wind conditions. And we do that to increase our speed over ground. We always like to have the ballast full when we're on a beam reach or the wind's on the quarter. It creates the most healing effect, so it's a water ballast helps upright the boat and makes it safer for any condition. Now we typically don't sail if it's over 15. If it's gusting 20 to 25, we just want to pull the sail in. And on the front sail, we have it on a furling line, so it's easy for us to just pull it in without having to leave the safety of the cockpit. We can get up to six, maybe seven knots on a beam reach. That's the fastest point of sail in McGregor. Sometimes we can reach it downwind if it's the winds on the corner. But that is where the McGregor kind of tops out and it starts healing over more than we gain speed. And we've even gotten six to seven knots with just the front sail, depending on the wind direction. It's very comfortable and easy to throw in if needed. My goodness, that is gorgeous. Oh, 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 here comes his, he got in a fight and someone ripped his freaking neck open. Maybe him. Look, he's got his foot on and off the... <laughs> My doc. That's funny, I didn't even see that one. He's so close, he looks far away on camera. I feel like taking that other one to the vet. Now on to the refitting. Trying to get some shade. It's like 85, you're cutting fiberglass. In jeans. Can you cut faster? I'm kind of getting hot. So we have access to a larger roll of fiberglass, but not with us. So we made the decision to use pieces for the setup and put them on now so we get a chemical bond versus coming back and having a uh, mechanical bond over fiberglass that's already set. It's worth trying to get a chemical bond. We can't put this off because it, it's going to range and the top of the boat has uh, like 10 holes exposed open right now so there's just no waiting. Yeah. So here I'm just dry fitting the fiberglass cloth that I cut and like we said we did do it in pieces but we do plan to use full length pieces for the very top. Yeah. We'll, tr we'll try three layers this way and see how it goes. I think that's fine, right? Yeah. Here we go. 
We're only doing two layers, by the way. And then the wood goes down. So do you want the wood to go down? Yeah, every, oh, everything in one lift. I got, I got a lot here, so we're gonna have to move quick. All right, just don't don't freak out. You're making my, my heart just beat fast okay. now. Kira was telling the captain to stop freaking me out because he was spun all up worried about the epoxy drying too fast. But I was the one actually doing the application, brushing it on, putting down the wood and the fiberglass. So I was worried I wasn't going to move quickly enough for him. I've, I've got to get this out of the container. So. Well, you said we were going to do all layers right here. Okay, let's do that then. So give me a brush and I'll brush it. You're freaking me out, man started with layering on a two-part epoxy and then we did two layers of 1708 biaxial fiberglass cloth. And it is exactly what I needed. I'm stoked about it. I was able to find in our supply just enough of the plywood that we needed to finish the deck. And we ended up going with two pieces of quarter inch ply. We wanted to do a half inch, but it ended up being a little bit too thick. And the quarter inch ply pieces kind of smooshed together were the right fit. As you know, the cut is always a little bit different from what is displayed. So again, those two pieces worked out well. The last part of our six layer project was adding back in a quarter inch piece of fiberglass that we had removed and then placing these cinder blocks on top so it could weigh down all of those layers and help them to adhere to one another. Okay, we're good. Then it was moving down the entire 86 inch run and reconstructing it layer by layer. Get it on me. I itched myself there. Is it on my skin? This ladder's not stable. So it's not serious if you get the epoxy on your skin, but you do want to get it off while it's still wet if possible because it is an irritant. For the rest of the day, I relied on the captain for help. Please check in with us in a couple weeks and we'll see how the refit and the fun is going. Thanks a lot for watching guys.